This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Welcome to Monday Matinee on the Mutual Audio Network. Following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. Once again, the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse brings you classic theatre adapted and performed by some of the very best audio players from around the world. So without further ado, here's your host for this week's show. And we're back for the final performance of Sonic Summerstock Theatre 2013. I'm Jack Ward with, of course... David Alt. David. Hello. It's, it's so good. I'm... I'm, I'm I'm almost scared of, uh, suspensefully scared of, uh, <laughs> no, of the fact that next week we won't be here. We will be thrust back into the action of and the cliffhanger of Sonic, uh, so the Sonic Society season nine. Um, yes, I, I am looking forward to it. But this has been a very relaxing and enjoyable summer. Thanks so much for sh- hanging out with me. No, it's been an absolute pleasure. It just feels like it's gone by so quickly. It has. It just feels like it's almost like it all happened all at once. Yes, in just an hour and a half. <laughs> well, thank you so much uh, to John Alsadek and the suspense crew for tonight's show. The Devil's Saint. And I know the curtain is just starting to roll up. Let's have a view. I think it's good. Tonight, we take pleasure in bringing you Suspense. A weekly anthology of notable melodramas from stage and screen, fiction and radio, presented each week to bring you to the edge of your chair, to keep you in suspense. Paris, 1927. Paris as it used to be, when lights twinkled from the old Trocadero to the hill of Sacre Coeur, when taxicabs honked and the beat of tango swayed and Chinese lanterns gleamed above the lake and the bois. St. Catherine's Day, a fancy dress ball at the opera, filling the marble halls with a multitude of masks and a multitude of dreams. The mosaic decorations are no less bright than the colors that weave here. Harlequin and Columbine, Cleopatra and the Musketeers. In the great marble foyer, there are little tables and lines of palms behind which you may sit screened. At one such table sits a young man, wearing the scarlet and gold uniform of an English guards officer in Wellington's day, and a dark-haired young girl in the costume of a Bacante. <laughs> no, no, don't. Please. No, you mustn't. Why not? But you really don't mind, do you? Mm, no, of course I don't mind. Only you mustn't. Oh, Ned. Now see here, Alona. We've got to settle this thing. You have enjoyed being here tonight, haven't you? Oh, Ned, I've loved it. After being cooped up at my uncle's place in the country, it's like... Oh, it's heaven. All right, then. When I take you back to the hotel, I'm going to face this uncle of yours. No! No, no, please don't! I'm going to say that you and I intend to be married, and that's that. I can't marry you, Ned. I've told you that. But why not? Just give me one good reason. Because, because I can't. My uncle, my uncle would never allow it, never. And that seems to you a good enough reason. 
Yes, Ned. This uncle of yours, or what's his name? Count Stefan Kohari. He's a Hungarian, I think you said? Yes. <laughs> so am I, but my mother was an American. What's he like, actually? Oh, he's, um... <laughs> he's a little eccentric. Now, please don't misunderstand. He's a great scholar and a historian. Only, he's a little strange. He... <gasps> Ned! What is it? There he is now. That elegant man in plain evening clothes, with the Order of the Golden Fleece across his chest. Oh, I see him. <sighs> and he looks as threatening as a thundercloud. <gasps> oh, he's throwing those two dressed as devils aside as though they didn't exist. Oh, give me my mask. Quick, quick, before he sees us. No, Ilona. <gasps> oh, but Ned. We'd better face this out now. Sit still. <clears throat> Good evening, Uncle Stefan. Good evening, Ilona. <clears throat> Uncle, may I present Edward Whiteford? Um, how do you do, sir? How do you do? Ilona, do you think that costume is quite the thing to wear in public? Why not? <laughs> but it's only a witch costume. An older generation might call it immodest. Never mind. Will you go and get your cloak or your domino or whatever you wore here? But... <gasps> Uncle, Uncle, please, please don't make me leave so soon. It's hardly 11 o'clock. I was not asking you to leave, my dear. I was merely asking you to put on a wrap. <sighs> All right. <laughs> I'll go get it. Why don't you stay and talk to Ned? I shall be delighted. Will you sit down, sir? Thank you. You seem to have quite a gathering at this table. <laughs> yes, um, some friends of mine from the embassy. They're upstairs dancing now. Well, look. Glasses, glasses, and still more glasses. You know, I was quite adept once at uh, musical glasses. Like it? F forgive me, sir, but th there's something I'd like to ask you. Yes? I, I don't know exactly how to say this, so I'd better say it in the shortest way. I, I want to marry your niece. Oh, look out, sir! You've smashed one of the glasses. Oh, a few francs will pay for that, but there are other things of higher value, at least to me. Well, uh, well maybe I ought to mention, first, that my full name is Lord... Edward Whitefoot. My father is the Earl of Cray. Indeed. I only mention that to show that we're, well, respectable enough. The British ambassador will vouch for me, sir, if you'd like me to ring him up. And perhaps I ought to mention that I have always kept Ilona carefully guarded from the world. Almost too carefully guarded, don't you think? That, Lord Edward, depends on my reasons. Oh. Yes, I'm sorry, sir. You have known Ilona for a long time? Well, four days. Four days? You wouldn't even choose a business partner in four days. Yet you want to marry my Ilona after four days? We know our own minds, sir. <laughs> you do, eh? Then you know more than the wisest men in this world. However, as one whose dearest wish is Ilona's happiness... I hope it is. Count Kahari. Do you doubt what I say? No, sir. Well, I will make you a proposition. I own an estate in Touraine, not far from Paris. A little chateau, a few hundred acres, fishing, a very good stable of horses. I know. Alona told me. She did. Well, then here is my suggestion. Why not come down and visit us for a week or two? Well, that's very decent of you, sir. Oh, not at all, not at all. And if, at the end of that time, you are not cured of this uh, infatuation... Oh, it's not an infatuation. I, I swear, it's not. No? Well, if at the end of that time you are not cured permanently of this feeling, 
you may take Ilona, and with my blessing. That's fair, isn't it? <laughs> it's more than fair, sir. Count Kahari, I, I don't know how to thank you. Oh no, please, don't even try. And at the least, I can promise you a very interesting experience. You see, at the Chateau des Ais, there is one certain bedroom. We call it the Tapestry Room. Oh? I assure you, it will be very interesting for you to sleep in that room. <laughs> Why? Is it haunted or something? Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Not haunted. And now, if you don't mind, I shall say good night. I hope I can trust you to bring Ilona safely to the hotel. But of course, sir. But of course. In the meantime, look over there. See the revelers? Streams of our fellow guests cascading down the main staircase from the ballroom. All masked. Shapes of nightmare, of delirium. Insane, dead masks. And yet, is it possible that the most terrifying thing might be what lurks behind those gargoyle faces? Uh, no. I don't think so. I, they're only ordinary people, like us. <laughs> that, sir, is where you make your mistake. Well, I shall expect you for the weekend. Until then. Until then, Count Kahari. Ned? Ned? It's all right, Alona. You can come out from behind those palms. Oh, what was he saying? I couldn't hear. Elona, it couldn't be better. Why, he's a very decent old boy, actually. And he's invited me to the Chateau de Zay. Oh, didn't he say anything about the tapestry room? Well, yes. He invited me to sleep there. And you said... Well, I said I would, naturally. Oh, oh you mustn't do it, Ned. I won't let you do it. Why the devil not? Because... Because everyone who sleeps in that room dies. Dies? Are you serious? Oh, Ned. Oh, please, please don't do it. Oh, nonsense. There are a lot of superstitions about every old house. This isn't a superstition, Ned. It happened once when I was a young girl. A man insisted on sleeping there. And they found him dead in the morning. Oh. Well, how did he die? They don't know. There was not a mark on his body. He wasn't shot or stabbed or strangled or poisoned or hurt in any way. He was just dead. Two nights later, in the province of France once called Touraine, Lord Edward Whiteford arrives at the Chateau des Ais as thunder stirs in those haunted hills. Ned! Hello, Elona. Oh, darling. No, you better not kiss me, Ned. Where's your uncle? He's in the drawing room playing the piano. Come along. Elona, is anything wrong? Oh. oh, everything's wrong. Two of my dogs were in horrible pain this afternoon. Dr. Solomon had to put them out of their misery with chloroform. You don't think... Oh. I just hope nobody's practicing, that's all. Here we are. I say, nice tiger skins on the floor. Uh, oh, who's that little old man with the grey beard sitting over there by the fire? That's Dr. Solomon. <laughs> Hasn't he funny looking eyes? Shh, 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 shh. He watches and watches and watches. Oh, he's an old friend of the family. Oh. Come along. Let's get this over with. Ah, Lord Edward. Welcome to Chateau des Ais. Thank you, Count Kahari. You must be drenched after your long carriage ride. Go by the fire and warm yourself. My servants will see that your luggage is taken up to the tapestry room. By an odd coincidence, Lord Edward, 
Dr. Solomon and I were just discussing the fate of the last person who slept in the tapestry room. This is not good, my friend. This is against my advice. <laughs> it's against his advice. Hear Dr. Solomon croaking? <laughs> this is not good. I tell you, it is the wrong season of the moon. Moon? But there is no moon tonight. It's raining cats and dogs. Oh, don't talk about dogs. <laughs> Nevertheless, it is the wrong season of the moon. I shall say no more. Cheerful blighter, that doctor. Don't do it, Ned. No, I won't be responsible if they make you do it. Count Kahari, what did happen to the last bloke who slept in the tapestry room? You mustn't call him a bloke, sir. He was a very saintly gentleman, the Bishop of Tours. That was some time ago. Ilona was only 15 years old, but uh, surely she must remember it. I remember it. The church, said our bishop, has no use for superstitions. <laughs> well, he insisted on sleeping there. I made it as comfortable for him as possible, but he was found dead next morning, with a crucifix still in his hand. Was it poison? There was no poison, monsieur. It's true, Ned. A dead man and no sign of what killed him. What do you make of that? Well, I didn't make anything of it. It's crazy. Please do not speak like that. I'm sorry. It is still the wrong season of the moon. Are there any sort of um, stories or legends attached to the room? Yes, there are. Well, sir? We are a very old family, Lord Edward. Old and perhaps accursed. When my ancestors moved from Hungary to France in the 17th century, they brought certain beliefs with them. The old religion. The old religion? Yes. The cult of Diana. The cult of Janus. The cult of freedom and fertility. The witch cult, if you prefer. Oh, now look here, sir. Oh, you smile. But when I say the word witch, you doubtless think of some humorous picture on a Halloween card. But it was very different in the Middle Ages, believe me. Then, my friend, there existed an organized religion which rivaled the church. There were many to worship unashamed at the Grand Sabbath, many to receive all favors from Satan, their master and to dance forever, joyously, in the red flaming quadrilles of hell. Well, some two hundred years ago, an ancestress of mine, Catherine Kohari, was tortured to death in the tapestry room for professing the old religion. Many persons have not thought it safe to sleep there since. Are you answered? <laughs> Come, sir. Uh, this is some sort of elaborate joke. Joke? The Bishop of Tours did not find it a joke. Not a mark on his body. I assure you as a physician, not a mark on his body. <laughs> no, not a mark on his body. Hear Dr. Solomon. <laughs> yes, I hear him. Well, understand me, Lord Edward. There's no compulsion in this. If you do wish to sleep in that room, all right. If you don't... Oh, ridiculous. I'm not afraid to sleep there, sir. Well, I thought perhaps you wanted to change your mind. Not at all. In fact, would you care to make a wager on it? What sort of wager? Well, if I spend the night in this famous room and come out of it alive... Yes? Will you give your consent to the marriage immediately? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? Why? Because I don't think the atmosphere of this house is good for a loner. What do you say? Will you do it? Very well, Lord Edward. I accept the terms of your wager. There'll be no quibbling or backing out or you saying you didn't mean it. After a few hours in the tapestry room, there will be no need for quibbling. <laughs> Shall we drink to it? But of course, sir. No, 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 don't do it, Ned. For the love of heaven, don't do it. Calm yourself, Ilona. Now, be good enough to pour us some drinks. 
Yes, Uncle. And then, Lord Edward, you can retire to the tapestry room. In the north tower of the Chateau des Ais, under the conical slate roof, is the tapestry room, a circular room hung with faded tapestries. These tapestries move slightly, with an uneasy mimicry of life, to the clamor of the storm outside. Hmm. Inviting as a tomb, isn't it? Oh well, well they've built a good fire anyway. I didn't realize how cold it was. The temperature must have dropped. Wait, what's that? Sounds like it's coming from behind the walls. Count Kahari, where did you come from? Forgive me, Lord Edward, for seeming to appear out of the wall in between the tapestries, like Mephisto appearing to Faust. Huh? <laughs> and this red dressing gown perhaps adds to the effect as well. How did you get here? A, a passage between the walls? Exactly. A little device of my ancestors for visiting this room. You know, they invented that for when its occupant was so unmannerly as to bolt the door. But the door's not bolted. You could have walked straight in. But I couldn't have done it unobserved. No, I suppose not. Well then, since nobody saw me come here, I'll just sit down by the fire. <laughs> Please sit opposite me. Is this the showdown, sir? Hmm? I don't understand. Well, there's got to be a showdown between us. Is that why you're here? Young man, I'm here to explain certain things to you. Would you care for a cigarette? Thank you. I... <laughs> oh, they're perfectly all right, if that's what you're afraid of. I'll have one, yes. A light? Thank you. When I was discussing the witch cult a while ago, you didn't appear to think I meant what I said. Do you want a perfectly frank answer to that? Of course. I think you're mad enough to mean anything. <laughs> what you say, in a sense, is quite true. You see, in an old and frankly inbred family like ours, the mind can crack, and the fantasies of witchcraft become as real, even more real, than the living world. Let me give you an example. Go on. The saucer on the table beside you is Ming Porcelain. It was once owned by Catherine Kohari, a martyr of the old religion. Yet you are using it as an ashtray. Oh. <coughs> I beg the witch lady's pardon. I'll blow off the ash. Well, that's a very dangerous remark, sir. Don't you understand that the worship of evil can be as strong and compelling as the worship of good? That the devil can have his saints too? That to a sick brain which knows but can't help itself, you have profaned this room merely by entering it? And therefore you deserve to die? Like the Bishop of Tours? Exactly. Certainly you're not going to tell me the devil killed him. The devil's agent may be flesh and blood. So, it was murder. Oh, of course it was murder. Murder so cunningly contrived that no one ever saw through it. Go on. Given the lack of physical damage, the instrument of destruction must have been something that left no trace whatsoever. Something like, for instance, chloroform. Chloroform. Yes, a drug not very well understood by laymen. Dr. Solomon, by the way, was using chloroform this afternoon to dispose of some dogs. So I've heard. Well, Dr. Solomon is old and very forgetful. You mean the chloroform could be stolen? Oh yes, it could be, easily. Now, suppose, I mean just suppose, I take a pad saturated with chloroform. I place it over the mouth and nostrils of a man already sleeping or drugged, so that he gets no air, taking care not to make contact with the skin as chloroform causes burns. My God! In a few seconds, unconsciousness. In two, perhaps three minutes, 
death. Certain death. Yes. <laughs> oh, and chloroform, you see? It, it evaporates very quickly. There is no trace in the stomach since nothing has been swallowed. So, delay your post-mortem for 24 hours. A very easy matter in these country districts. And no trace remains in the blood. Murder without a mark, Lord Edward. Murder without a mark! You can't do it, Count Kahari. There's one thing you're forgetting. Really? What is that? I'm not sleeping. And I'm not drugged. Ah, but you are. What? How? <laughs> In the cigarette? Hmm? Oh, no. In the drink you had with me. <laughs> what was it? Morphine. And you've had enough to put three men to sleep. No. <laughs> you see? You've knocked over the fire irons. You'd have been in the fire yourself if I hadn't caught you. Take your hands off me. Just as you please. I, I won't, Commander. I, I won't. I, I could just reach that bell pull. But you can't. We'd better sit down again. You're only wasting what breath you have left. Didn't I tell you not to trust surface appearances? Didn't I warn you what shapes might lie behind the mass you saw in public? But you had no faith in the religion of our fathers. You had no faith in these outworn superstitions. And you wouldn't take warning. You murdering lunatic. Do you think I ever trusted you for a second? I knew what you were going to try. I only, only I thought you couldn't get away with it. Oh. So that's how you killed the Bishop of Tours. And that's how you're going to kill me. Who, I? You don't think I killed the Bishop of Tours, or had anything at all to do with this? But didn't you? Why bother to pretend now? I had reckoned on stupidity, but hardly such stupidity as this. You damned young fool! I'm not trying to kill you. I'm trying to save you. To... To save me. Dr. Solomon. Yes, Mr. Lacoe. Come out from behind the secret door now. Come out and be my witness. Yes, monsieur. I shall always guard the family honor, even when I guess how men die. This young man evidently thinks I've been talking about myself. Now tell me, doctor, am I, in the popular parlance, insane? No, monsieur. Heaven forbid. I have never known a saner man. <laughs> I can't stand this much longer. I, I, the drugs is taking hold. I, I, I can't see straight any longer. Have you any notion, Lord Edward, why I brought you to this house? No. You would never have believed me if I had merely told you. Oh, no. Youth is too wise, too brash, too trusting. So, if I were to convince you of anything, I had to bring you here. To show you. Show me? Show me? What? What? Ilona! <laughs> yes. Yes, Ilona, with the bottle of chloroform in her hands. It's possible. In the black second before unconsciousness, ask yourself these questions. Why do you think I've kept Ilona so well guarded from the world? Why, at a fancy dress ball, for instance, did I object to the costume of a medieval witch whose dogs were poisoned so that chloroform should be brought here? Who poured you the drink drugged with morphine? You, you mean... It was Ilona. She's been helplessly, hopelessly insane for more than ten years. So ends The Devil Saint by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes. Tonight's story of Suspense. 
Suspense is produced by Blue Hours Productions. Tonight's radio drama was adapted by John C. Alzadek and Dana Perry Hayes from the radio play by John Dixon Carr. Damon Crawl was Count Kohari. Adrian Wilkinson was Ilona Kohari. Christopher Duva was Lord Edward Whiteford. And Les Mahoney was Dr. Solomon. I'm Damon Crawl. Next week at this time, tune in again for another study in suspense. And that's tonight's show and the whole season of Sonic Summerstock Theater 2013 at the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse. Thanks so much, David, for being such a great co-host for the Sonic Society last season and for the Summerstock this season and for the upcoming Sonic Society Season 9. Oh, you're going to be sick to death of me. <laughs> Jack, it's been an absolute pleasure. It, it's really, it really has been. <laughs> Thanks to John Alcidek and everyone else who's in, been involved in this season of the Summer Stock. We'll see you next year here at the Playhouse. Until then, I'm Jack Ward. And I'm David Alt. Thank you. Good night. Bye-bye. <laughs> This completes the Sonic Summerstock Playhouse 2013 season. We hope you enjoyed tonight's play and all the performances on our Sonic Theatre stage. All productions, performances, characters and scripts presented in the Playhouse belong strictly to their copyright holders, and no copyright infringement is assumed or intended. The Sonic Summerstock Playhouse is part of the Sonic Society podcast and Electric Vicuna Productions. Any shows that continue their run must have explicit permission from all parties involved. Return with us next week as Jack and I begin Season 9 of the Sonic Society. For the Society, I'm David Alt. Good night. There are many things that we can all do that may help stop the spread of the coronavirus. But one thing we can all do is to have a plan in case you do get sick. First, consult with your health care provider for more information about monitoring your health for symptoms suggestive of COVID-19. Second, stay in touch with others by phone or email. You may need to ask for help from friends, family, neighbors, community health workers, or more if you become sick. And finally, determine who can care for you if your caregiver gets sick. For more information, go to cdc.gov and be well, everyone. <laughs>